Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back with even more Mego. And I'm still here too, though I'm not sure why these Megos or Migos or whatever you want to call them, you know, they're just dolls, right? Oh, come on, Gorilla. These things are dolls. Look at them. They're small Barbies for crying out loud. I suppose one could consider these to be, in a broad sense, dolls. Yes, but... Oh, so now he admits it. Oh, yeah. This capitalist pig dog has so much money and so much free time that he buys dollies and makes movies about them. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh it up, GI jerk. <laughs> the dolls, he admits it. <laughs> Are you done? Oh, stop making fun of Dan Classic. Sure, he's a grown man that collects toys and he and he's kind of fat. Kind of! And videos of people just sitting there picking their nose, getting more views than his. But he's a good guy, and I won't let you run him down. You just did it for me, you butt-chinned army ass! Army? I don't know if you know this, but I was once a Navy SEAL. Sit on it, motherfuckers, because today we're looking at Mego Happy Days figures! Raz Holly, hit the music! A sitcom debuted on ABC, capitalizing on the 1950s nostalgia craze that was currently sweeping the nation. See, George Lucas had just released a movie called... Star Wars? No! What the fuck would Star Wars have to do with 1950s nostalgia? It was a long time ago. The movie was American Graffiti, made on a bet Lucas based the story on his formative years involved in the car culture of mid-century Bakersfield, California. By the way, I don't know what it was like back then, but Bakersfield sucks now. But I digress, the movie was a hit and happened to star Ron Howard. ABC had filmed a pilot for something similar with Ron Howard and decided it was time to pull the trigger. Happy Days went on to be one of the most successful sitcoms of all time running from 1974 to 1984. A lot of the TV tropes that we're familiar with today were ripped right from that show, even the term Jumping the Shark. Which this show did a long time ago. It would have to have been successful first! <laughs> would you two put a lid on it? Anyway, Happy Days popularity and the popularity of Mego 8-inch figures converged during this time to produce a series of figures and a couple accessories that still fetch crazy prices to this day online. In the series, you've got four of the main characters from the show, Richie Cunningham, of course, and then his buddies, Ralph Mouth and Potsy. But the figure that everybody wanted was Arthur Fonzie Fonzarelli the character for which the term breakout character was coined. They put this dude's face all up on everything, from lunchboxes to Halloween costumes and all kinds of other shit. But we're talking about the 8-inch Mego Fonzie, and this thing by the standards of the time was pretty freaking cool. And there's even more Fonzie fare. There was also a motorcycle, a jalopy, and a garage, all for the Fonz. For a guy that started out as a minor character, Fonzie became the center of the Happy Days universe, to the point where they could have just called it Fonzie Days and been done with it. Anyhow, these figures go for stupid money online, and for some reason I guess Happy Days Mania is still running wild. I was able to score all four just in time to make the video, so let's check them out! 
Okay, let's start with Richie Cunningham. I have this Richie Cunningham carded figure from 1976. Let's take a look at the art on the front of the box. Just to start here, we have the Happy Days logo accompanied by a jukebox. If you're not sure what a jukebox is, you know what? Uh, ask your dad. Uh, then we're going to take a look here. Um, notice something right here. This is an unpunched card. And you know exactly what I'm going to do with it. And before we do that, we're, we're still looking at the box. Uh, it says, recommended for children over three years old. Fully posable eight-inch figure, Richie. It doesn't say Richie Cunningham. But uh, first, let's continue to take a look at this package. Trademark designates trademark of Paramount Pictures Corporation, 1976. Manufactured exclusively by Mego Corp, New York, New York, 10010, made in Hong Kong. And uh, we have the Mego Corp logo right there. And if we were to turn it around here, we see the back of the box. We have Happy Days Collect. Fonzie's whole gang. You see, this became very Fonzie-centric already. Fonzie is the main character. Everybody else is just a bunch of fucking schlubs that satellite around Fonzie. We also see the photo of Fonzie's motorcycle. Finding one of these is kind of tough. Um, I tried to find one for the, the episode, and uh, I failed. So, sorry guys, but... Still got all four of these figures. Um, the box is basically the same for the three of Fonzie's buddies. Um, but to show you, here's, here's Potsy. He looks like a confused animal with his head sort of tilted to the right, like, huh? huh? Um, and also <laughs> unpunched. And then we have Ralph Mouth um, and his. Uh, unpunched card there so it's actually ralph mouth m-a-l-p-h i didn't know this to till just recently or m-a-l-f but i know it's m-a-l some shit because i always thought it was ralph mouth like he was a mouthy fuck uh but you know what Sometimes I'm wrong and uh, okay and finally we have the Fonz happy days Fonzie in the Fonzie font right there uh, It says recommended for children over three years old. This is kind of like a cool box like it has this open up thing um, It has the photo of the Fonz uh, Back in the day when you bought these you didn't know what it looked like on the inside. It was completely covered and a mystery to to who bought the thing except here's a picture of the actual toy on the back and it, you have directions to how to make Fonzie do a thumbs up he's got an action feature god damn it look at this thing all right I'm gonna get upset later when we see the new Fonzie but but I'm not I'm gonna save that just just keep in mind keep keep that in mind um, and, and so uh, let's read the box let's just look at the box before I get too upset Happy days, Fonzie. To make the Fonz do a thumbs up, position arms and hands. Just flip his movable thumbs up for the Fonzie trademark look. Fonzie's trademarked. Press lever down and watch Fonzie trademark in action. He, he puts the thumbs up. Uh, roll up jeans for that Fonzie look. <laughs> 1976 Paramount Pictures Corporation. Manufactured in the colony of Hong Kong, Mego Corp. New York, New York, 10010. Um, Happy Days Fonzie 8 inch action figure. Inside, we open it up like a book. Recommended for children over three years old with moving arm mechanism for that true Fonzie action. Just like on TV, folks. It's an eight inch action figure, shows in front of the motorcycle. Um, makes you wish they made a motorcycle, and they did! So imagine getting this as a little kid in the height of Fonzie Mania and how exciting it would be. Now I know we're real excited to see what these guys all look like outside of the box. And we are about to see what these guys look like outside of the box. Um, but first, we need to punch out the uh, these 
these punch holes, open the figures, and get them out, let them breathe, and then we'll take a look at the Happy Days Mego figures from 1976. So let's start with Richie Cunningham. He's got his little khaki pants, his black shoes. He's got his nice little button down shirt on that has no buttons and his high school sweater with the uh, the J for jerk off high school, wherever the fuck he went. I, I don't know, I'm not like big Happy Days um, fan. Um, I have watched a lot of it, but I'm, I wouldn't you know necessarily know enough to to answer all the trivia questions. But look, we're not talking about the fucking show. We're talking about this figure, and it's right here in my hand, and it's all mine, baby. I just opened it up, and his joints are super stiff, and he's super poseable, just like every other Mego figure. And man, things were so much better before I was born, it seems like. Um, in that, you know, it's a sad coincidence, really, because it's not my fault the fucking figures are shitty now or if they aren't shitty they're really expensive or on top of that they can be really expensive and shitty at the same time but this figure pretty good he looks like who he's supposed to look like he looks like ron howard um and there's really not much more you can say about him he's great i'm glad i opened him up fuck you if you don't like it next up we've got ralph ralph look at him He's got the same little black shoes that uh, that Richie Cunningham had on. He's got some navy blue pants. He has a little yellow sweater vest over a white shirt, a long sleeve sort of shirt. He's got a 1970s fucking collar because the show was made in the 1970s. And by the time the show was like over or, or like in the later seasons, like they weren't even trying to make it look like the 50s anymore. Everybody had like fucking blow drying hair and, and they looked all super 70s. And uh, I mean, I guess, you know what? You gotta go out and live your life if you're an actor and you gotta look like modern times. You can't just walk around looking like fucking 20 years ago if you're a young Donnie Most trying to go out and get pussy on the town. Um, but there, there you go, here he is, Donnie Most from from, uh, from fucking Happy Days, Ralph Mouth, Ralph the Mouth, because he's always blowing Fonzie. And there's fucking Potsy, who was the last one to arrive. Um, also fresh out of the box, super stiff joints. He also has the same little high school sweater. It's more of like a Letterman jacket that he has. Um, of the three dorks that hang out with Potts, or I'm sorry, with Fonzie, Potsy, I might 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 be the coolest. He was the singer of the of the song when you see him later on in the in the later seasons when they change from the Rock Around the Clock to the uh, to the Happy Days theme song that I swear was just made for when they put it in syndication. It was like like oh, well, we're rocking all week to you, motherfucker. We're gonna be on five nights a week right there on your syndicated station. But anyway, let's look at the the picture here, or not the picture, but the fucking figure. And man, yeah, he does. He looks he looks like Potsy. I, I'd say so. It's a it's a good likeness. And uh, he's got his little T-shirt. His fucking pants are coming off. Um, let's fucking close that up. Be a little bit more modest there. Fucking Potsy. Um, usually these things you see them, they attach back here, um, but these ones attach in the front. Um, it looks like his jeans are fucking distressed. Like, I don't know, you know what? It's sun damage, dude. Like, oh wow, this thing's been in the in the package. It was must have been just out and UV light has fucking killed the front of the pants over the past 40 something years that this thing sat in a box waiting waiting to fulfill its purpose of being on the Dan Classic Show. Well, here it is, Potsy. Here's your 15 fucking seconds of fame. Hey! Finally, it's the Fonz! What we've all been waiting for. Uh, 
Arthur Fonzie fucking Fonzarelli uh, with his little leather jacket that's not really leather. It has a leather style uh, texture to it. Um, it looks very cool. He's got a white shirt, blue jeans, boots, and um, the thumbs up, man. He's got the thumbs up action. And put his arms up. Hey, I'm the fucking Fonz. Hey, hey, and that's what he does. Um, he's also super posable. You can still pose everything. Um, he can still uh, grab stuff with his hands. He can actually grab things better. He almost has like the He-Man right hand um, in which the, the thumb actually, what? Look at this. The thumb is articulated so you can put the thumb down and Fonzie can punch you right in the fucking mouth because he's a legendary television tough guy. And that's pretty fucking cool. This is an awesome figure. This is an awesome figure and strangely enough, this is the one that you can find online for the cheapest. Isn't that fucking crazy? I think it's probably because it was the most popular figure and everybody fucking had one back in the day, I'm assuming, for how popular fucking Fonzie was and all, all the merchandise and bullshit that he was on uh, years ago. Um, but man, what a fucking cool figure. I really like it. And um, if you see here, this is the little lever that you, you press down. Hey, hey, and you get the thumb out. By the time the early 80s rolled around, both Mego and the ratings for Happy Days were in the toilet. And we never got to see a Ted McGinley Mego figure, even in the Merry with Children line. Sorry, Ted. McGinley wasn't so lucky, but Happy Days would return for Mego in 2018 with the Revival line that saw three figures released. I grabbed these while they were still around, so let's see how they compare to the classic line. And we begin where we began last time uh, with Richie Cunningham. He looks a little different, doesn't he? Um, skin's a little lighter. I don't know if that that dark skin that you see on some of the Migos, the Star Trek Migos, and now the the uh, these Migos that I just got, these uh, Happy Days ones, they look really tan. Um, did they look that tan back in the day? I mean, I guess. You know, their their faces match their hands and their, you know, their bodies, so maybe they were. They just made them that tan back in the day. Um, but, you know, as you can see, Ron Howard's a red-headed dude. Like, he's not, he is not a tan guy. And, um, and so, skin tone-wise, this looks a little bit more like Ron Howard. We're going to see how much more it looks like him when we open it up, if he looks that much more like him. But let's take a look at the packaging first. We have the Happy Days logo. It says his full name, Richie Cunningham. Um, it's part of the TV Favorites line. Classic 8-inch figure. This is not the classic 8-inch figure. This is a modern 8-inch figure. Um, and we have him saying, sit on it. Did he, did he the one that said sit on it? Sit on it, Richie. Oh, sit on it, Mal. Sit on it, Howard. Sit on it, Kirk. Sit on it, Mark. Richard. Yeah? Go to the field uh -huh. and sit on it. Sit on it, Spike. <laughs> uh, Bob Hope can sit on it. Sit on it, Fonzie. Hey! Maybe he did say sit on it. Maybe, maybe everybody said sit on it. Was he the one that said kiss my grits? Oh, wait a minute. That was a different show. Anyway, Richie, Fonzie, and Chachi... Um, are the listed figures on the front of the box here. That actually changes depending on what figure you're looking at, and we're going to see that here in a minute. But first, we'll see that he comes with a milkshake. Oh, I bet he can't fucking hold it. That's my bet. I don't know. We're going to find out when we open it up. Um, and so let's take a turn around on the back side here. We have the uh, sort of collect them all, I guess. We don't have pictures of the fucking figures. We just have some um, photographs that they took off of Google and cut them out and stuck them on a red record and put some lines in there. And let's look at all of these, these features. Officially licensed, detailed, eight inch character, authentic retro packaging. The fuck, it, you know, it looks more like the retro Star Trek packaging, but not even really like that either. This whole blue and blue and gray fucking um, on the Happy Days figures. I don't, I don't know why, but no, back to the back, back to the back. Officially licensed eight inch character, authentic retro packaging in fucking quotes. Pose figure in any position. 
any position. We've been over this before. Original Mego toy line quality. Limited edition, numbered for collectability. Collect them all, so says Mego Marty. And what was the name of Richie's band? I don't fucking know. It was the, the band never had a name. Well, that's a fucking trick question. Hello, it's me, Migo Marty. And he's right there on the back of the box. But this is pretty much what the box looks like for Richie. So instead of Potsy or Ralph Mouth, uh, we get Chachi Arcola. Um, and, when, and you can see his fucking feathered 1970s blowout hairdo. Um, Later character that comes on later on, he's uh, he's Fonzie's nephew, um, and we have his catchphrase, "Where, where, where? I'm baby, I'm baby Chachi, right? Just like on the show, right, guys? Here's what we all been waiting for. It's Arthur, Fonzie, Fonzarelli, just Fonzie, all lowercase. Uh, TV favorites, classic 8-inch figure, and as you can see, we've got a little bit of difference on the front of the box already. Fonzie, Richie, and Joni? I don't remember there being a Joni figure in this line. If you remember, please let me know. Please let me know in the comments. I'm sure one of you does, and, uh, and we can all learn something in the comments on a Dan Classic video. Imagine, imagine that. Uh, he comes with a comb. That will immediately be lost. This thing is going behind my desk and I will never fucking see it again. I might fucking breathe in too heavily and inhale the fucking thing. It'll just disappear. It's so fucking small. I mean, and why? Why even fucking go to the trouble of making this shit? Fucking, because it's, dude, there's no point. You can't really hold it on the back of the box. It has the same shit, except, hey, what the fuck is Aaron Moran doing back here? Where the fuck? Is my Aaron Moran figure? Where's Joni? So we didn't get a Joni figure. We got a Chachi figure. Um, I don't know. Maybe we did, did get a Joni figure, and I just never saw it. There he is. There's the Fonz. I'm gonna. We're gonna open these fucking things up and see what they look like on the inside. Let's do it right now. Alright, so let's compare these goddamn things, and we're going to start off with the characters that don't really have direct um, you know, comparisons to make, because Chachi, they, they never made a Chachi figure in the 70s, and we don't have Ralph Mouth or, uh, or Potsy to look at. So, uh, if you want to take a look, um, we've got um, the, the, the modern Mego body is, is heavier. It seems a little sturdier. Um, it's nice. It's not bad. Like, it's actually really not bad as far as, like, the quality of the build of the figure. And a lot of times, I don't really like the sculpt, but the sculpt on this one actually looks good. I really wanted to tear these fucking things apart, but I, it's, I'm finding it really difficult to do. Um, the paint job on the head looks kind of shitty, um, but uh, other than that, it, I, I, it looks like Scott Baio. Uh, so, I mean, there's really not much else to say. It's, you know what, dude, you know what the articulation is. You know what these fucking things can do if you've ever seen a Mego figure, and I've shown you before uh, what they can do. They are super poseable, and this is no different. These are, The new ones are just as poseable as the old ones. Um, he does look like a little, little smaller, maybe? Um, but maybe it's because they made a little made him a little smaller because he's Chachi and Chachi is shorter than than Ralph Mouth and, and Potsy. So so there you go. All right, so here it is. Here's our semi main. We're going to go ahead and compare um, these two. So now it looks like the classic Mego figures are actually bigger than the the modern Mego figures. The, the body um, is a little bit bigger, the head's a little bit bigger. Um, of course, we already uh, noted on the, the skin color being darker, which is odd in the case of uh, Ron Howard being a, a ginger and, uh, and having fucking red hair, which obviously his hair is brown on both of the figures. So in all these years, 40 something fucking years, we couldn't figure out how to paint red Mego. There's something. <laughs> There's something. He's got basically the same outfit. 
Um, except he's wearing the the, uh, the varsity jacket that Potsy has on, um, and then the original has the uh, the stickers a little bit better on the uh, on the classic. Classic Richie has the has the better, but but pretty much the same. Um, it's like the, we put a little rubber band around this. So there's some more packaging. Yay! I love packaging. All right, so yeah, shirt. Um, it's got a little bit of Farmer John going on. Um, this one. Um, all right, fucking. Uh, we got a little bodybuilder Brad going on with this one, but I guess it wasn't really made to be opened up. But I guess you don't have a fucking choice. And they put fucking. When you put goddamn. I wanted to like the old ones better! Anyway, um, he has sleeves. So, plus points for fucking New Richie. Um, New Richie, his body's a little heavier. He's a little easier to pose. Um, and these are both fresh figs right out of the box. Now, these have been sitting around for. For 40 years, 40 plus years. Um, so, you know, maybe a little deterioration has happened. But, you know, the look of them is they look almost exactly the same. It's almost like they took the exact same sculpt and just scaled it down slightly. Um, let's take a look at accessories. Um, remember these milkshakes? Look, I fucked up his hand. <laughs> um, yeah, so they, they come with accessories. They'll, they'll, I, I don't know. Is he broken? Yeah, he's probably broken, and uh, he can't hold his fucking accessories. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. <sighs> he's got fucking, like, elf shoes on. Like, okay, let's look at the old shoe. Looks like a shoe. It's like a you know nerdy Richie Cunningham fucking shoe that he would wear, and both fucking Chachi and fucking uh, Richie have these like long ass turned up at the end fucking white fucking weird weird fucking bottomed fucking elf shoes like magic made shoes like little booties. Um, yeah, these are awful. These are awful, and um, and uh, yeah, I think I broke the fucking uh, the, the shoulder on that. So be careful with these fucking things. And now it's time for the main event: Fonzie versus Fonzie. Fonzie, nineteen seventy-six versus Fonzie, two thousand eighteen. I guess whenever the fuck these things came out, um, they are wearing the same exact outfit. Uh, modern Fonzie actually has stitching on his jeans. I do like the look of his boots a little bit. Um, the bottom isn't so embarrassing. Not that you're ever really going to see it. Uh, the the jacket looks okay. It looks like it's like a pleather looking jacket or whatever. Uh, he's got the t-shirt. Um, has a little stitching on it. Now the old one has the shirt, has the jacket. Now the jacket has has uh, it's a little bit more worn. This is an open figure. You know what? I didn't get a I didn't get a sealed Fonzie. Boots? I don't know, man. Those boots are pretty good looking, and they look like fucking real boots. So there's that. Now let's take a look at the heads. Let's take a look at the differences. Modern Fonzie, a um, little bit closer to Fonzie's skin color, maybe. I don't know. I mean, you know, everybody had kind of a tan going back in the day, right? I don't know. They, they, you know what? It looks more like Fonzie to me, the old one. The hair is basically the same. It's basically a scaled down version of it, except that when they went to fucking paint the new one, they gave Fonzie a cross eye. He's like, die, die, die. like fucking, he's supposed to be cool, not stupid. So, um, so points off for Fonzie's cross eye. Um, but yeah, you know what? Both of these have, have their points, but it really comes down to is this. It's fucking this. It's a goddamn action figure. It says right on the box, hey, 
It's fucking Fonzie. It's what he does. How hard was it to make his fucking figure with the little lever? Obviously, it wasn't that hard. They did it 40-something fucking years ago. And, and what? We can't do it now? It was too fucking hard. It was a bridge too fucking far. And, and I don't know if you just noticed this thing. I broke one of these fucking modern figures. And these old ones that are 40-something years old are in perfect goddamn condition! They didn't really think of the uh, of what what they were gonna do with these fucking hands. They just made hands. They're like, oh, well, they'll look like hands, um, and they do. They do look like hands. You're right. Um, you're right. I'm, I'm not gonna argue that they look like hands. He's got sleeves on his shirt. Let's see this old one. Of course not. Of course fucking not. I mean, it, it makes more sense for Fonzie to wear a sleeveless shirt, but still, we know we know he had a regular T-shirt back in the day. So, yeah, there's, there's points for both of them, but still, you gotta give it up for the original. Hey! When I first saw these revival figures on the shelves, I was stoked that Nego was back in action. Sure, I noticed the quality wasn't so hot, but it had been so long since I'd seen an original Nego 8-inch figure, I figured they always looked like that. Truth is, the figures made in the 1970s, with all the disadvantages of technology and experience, were leagues better than their modern counterparts. And that's not nostalgia talking or anything. I didn't grow up with these. In the end, I'll say the same thing I said about the Married with Children figures. They're just okay. And I believe maybe a little bit more effort could have been put into these, instead of shelling out for every goddamn license under the sun, than crapping out a limited run of subpar figures. So that's Mego Happy Days, everybody! Did you grow up with the old ones? Did you pick up the new ones? Do you like to play with dollies? Ah! <laughs> dollies! <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next time on the Dan Classic Show! Raz Holly, hit the music!